איש חי, רב פעלים, הרב הגאון, הרב אלמליח של איתה, רב הקהילה, יהי רצון שימשיך מעלה מעלה להפיץ מעיינותיו פוצה, להגדיל תורה ולהדירה, ייתן לו הקדוש ברוך הוא בריאות טובה, נחת מכל יוצאי חלציו, הלכות ימים ושנים, בסוף השמחות, אמן כן יהיה רצון. בעזרת השם, this Shabbat we will read פרשת שמות. The beginning of the parasha about uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was born, and uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, his mother, put him uh, in Teva, in the Nile, you say the Nilus, the Nile, Nile. the Nile, and the um, Then daughter of Pao found him, Baruch Hashem, everything was okay. Later, after many years, when Hashem wanted to make the miracles, the plagues to give the Egyptians, Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, Emor el Aharon, hit the Nile. Why not Moshe? <coughs> The Midrash said that uh, first Hashem told Moshe, Moshe, you have to do that. Moshe said, please, Hashem, uh, I cannot. He, did, he didn't say, I don't want. I cannot. Why? Because when I was born, the Egyptians wanted to kill every baby Jew, so the Nile protected me. I was there, the night protected me. So I have Hakarat Atov to the night. And Chazal bring that story, and they say, Bo sheshatita mimenu mayim, al tizrok even letocho. If you drank water from a uh, well, don't put stone, don't throw stone to the well. So Moshe enjoyed from the nail, from the Nile, from the Nile, so he cannot hit the Nile. So Hashem told him, tell Ahon. The same thing was a Makat Dam, Makat Sfardea. Sfardea also, Makat Kinim also, the three plagues Aharon HaKohen did. Also, the dust in Egypt. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Hashem, when I killed the Egyptian, I covered him with the dust. So now I have the dust help me. I have Hakarat Atov. I have to give back so I cannot hit the dust. Hashem told him, tell Aharon. What is this? The dust can feel the has feeling, understand, you hit him, you don't, what is that? Nothing, zero. The Nile has feeling, the Nile, the water, the yeah, Nile. So what is the meaning of Hakarata Tov here? What is Hakarata Tov? It's not Hakarata Tov. You give back to the Nile, you are playing with the Nile, you talk to the Nile, what, what is this? But Hachamim want to give us a strong, strong lesson from that. Hakarat Atov, it's self-education for you. You have to educate yourself. You don't care if the other one, he understands, he knows or not. You think about yourself. He did a favor to you, even if he, if he didn't mean. Nothing. You got something, Akarata Tov, you are not allowed to hit it. Even it's a, uh, it doesn't understand, no feeling about yourself. You have to educate yourself. You have to do that. Hazal said a story at the beginning of the parasha connected to that subject. Paro. 
Paro was the worst man, yeah? You, we, we know who was Paro. Hazal said about the Pasuk, Vayakum Melech Hadash al Mitzrayim. Hadash, new, new king. So the, the Midrash said it was not new Paro, it was the same Paro that was before. But the Egyptians, the Midrash said, Egyptians came to Paro and told him, look, Am Israel became big nation and uh, they will fight against us, so we are afraid. We have to take them to make them slaves and to kill them and to be bad to them. Paro said, no way. Paro said, don't you remember that last generation we had Yosef at Tzadik, Yosef. And Yosef, when it was hunger in Egypt, Yosef saved us. Without Yosef, no one was exist here now. Akarata Tov. So we have to have Akarata Tov to Yosef. Il male Yosef, lo hainu hain, he said. We could not survive the hunger. <coughs> Only because of Yosef we survived. So how come now you want to torture his children, great children, great grandchildren? How come? The Egyptians didn't want to listen to Paro. And when he insisted, he was strong. He insisted. No, no, no way. You, you know what they did? Revolution. Like, you know, South America, many countries, Africa. Yeah, it was the same in Egypt. They, one day they bring soldiers, they took Pao out, out of the palace, and they started to make uh, travels to Am Israel. And the Midrash said it was for three months. Three months. After three months, Pao went and he said, okay, I agree, I'm with you. I give up, I agree, I will be with you. And uh, okay, they put him back. He became again a king and he started to help them. And he was, in the end, the worst. He used to make bath with the blood of uh, Jewish babies. He had leprosy and he, he used to, to wash his body with uh, blood. He was Hitler, he was the worst. So, Hazal tell us this story to see that even Pao, Pao, the worst man, at the beginning, he thought about Hakarata Tov. Even Pao, he had Hakarata Tov. And he lost his job for that. Because of Hakarata Tov, he lost his job. And you know, if someone, he has a job, he, had, he has a power, Kavod, honor, to lose the job, it's the worst for him. The worst. Uh, Hazal say, Rabbi Yoshua ben Prahya, he said, Bathila, im omrim li, mi shaomer li ale, ani kofto u maniho lifne ari. Ahar shaliti, מי שאומר לי רד, אני שופך עליו קיטון של רותחים. The meaning is like that. רבי יהושע בן פרחיה was תלמיד חכם and very very smart. He said, if someone wants to tell me you are going to be the leader, I think you are a special man, you have to be the leader. The one that tells me that, he tells me that, he hates me. He hates me, because if he loves me, he doesn't want me to die with heart attack, young, that people will hate me, I will have problems. To be a leader, it's not good. So if someone comes and he tells me, uh, you are going to be, I want you to be the leader, it means like, it's exactly like he said, I want to kill you. So if he wants to kill me, I'm allowed to kill him first. So if someone tells me you have to be the leader, what I will do to him? I will tie him. I will take him to the zoo, to the lion, 
put him inside the cage of the lion, the lion will eat him. He wants to kill me, I will kill him. After I got the job, now I am the leader. I am the leader. If someone comes to me and tells me it's not good to be the leader, so please, go, we want to fire you. This one, to lose my job after I got the honor, the honor, after I tasted the power and the honor to be a leader, I cannot live without that. So the one that wants to take me, he doesn't like me, he hates me. So this one, I will take boiling water on his head, I will kill him. That's what Rabbi Yoshua ben Prahya said. Maharsha, Maharsha asked a question. He said, why? The two, they are very bad. The first one that told him to be a leader, he is bad. He has to kill him. And the other one also is bad because he said he has to lose his job. So why at the beginning, both of them he wants to kill? The first one, he, how he wants to kill him? To tie him and to put him uh, to the line, to give him to the line. And the second one, he, want, he wants to put boiling water on his head. What is the difference? And he said like that. To lose the job, it's very difficult, more than to have a job. Both of them, it's not good. But the first one, I want to kill him. But how I will kill him? I will not take uh, something, I'm not an Arab guy, to take a knife or to take a sword to kill him myself. Right. I just will tie him, I will put him in the cage and I will leave. And the lion will kill him. I will not kill him in my hands. The leader of the animals. But the second one, not only I will kill him, I will kill him with the, the worst death, will put on his head boiling water. So it means to lose the job is the worst. Pao agreed to lose his job, he was not a king for three months. Why? Because of Hakarat Torah. Many mitzvot in the Torah we have, it's Hakarat Torah. One of them, to give respect to our parents. Kabedet avicha ve'etimecha. It's Hakarat Torah. And every day we have to think about that. Because Many people, they do the opposite. If someone gave you something good, so now you owe him. <coughs> you owe him, it means that you are bar hov. It means you owe him, like you took money from someone, he gave you at the first minute, oh, thank you, thank you, you saved my life, you gave me money. Then when he comes back to you, he wants back the money, you hate him, yeah? So, but he gave it to you, why, why do you hate him? At least you have to understand, you have to give back. Akarata Tov, it's very difficult. If I owe him, it means he has a plus on me. He is more than me. And people cannot accept that. Because of that, Akarata Tov, Akarata Tov, it's a very simple, very logic. You got good, you have to give back good. And I'm telling you, telling you, Abutai, many times, Hakaratatov, when you do something good, it will come back to you. Hakaratatov. Sometimes Hashem will give you back. Sometimes He will get your reward after 120 years. And sometimes it's coming back when you do something good Usually people, when they give good to their, their, their friends, they don't think he will give me back. <coughs> I want to do good. But if, even if you see he didn't, in the end it will come back to you. Shlomo HaMelech said it. Shlach lachmecha al pnei amayim. Sent you bread on the water. Ki berov ayamim timtainu. One day you will find it. It will come back to you. 
Today I was in one place, I told them a story happened to my father. And uh, you can see what is Hakarat uh, Tov and how it comes back to you. Um, my father was learning in Yeshivat Porat Yosef. Uh, he had friends there. The closest friend he had all of his life. He loved him very much. Hacham Baruch Ben Haim. He was a rabbi of uh, Sha'are Zion in New York. Very famous rabbi. Hacham Baruch. People called him Hacham Baruch. Hacham Baruch, when he was about 80, one day he got a heart attack at his house. So immediately Atzala came and it was uh, urgent. Immediately they took him to the closest hospital. The closest hospital was <coughs> Maimonides. Maimonides. You know where is Maimonides Hospital? It's next to Borough Park. Maimonides, it's a big uh, hospital, but uh, about something that it's not, uh, I don't want to speak bad about them, but the, some hospitals, they have much better doctors. So he was in hospital, they took care of him, they do all the best for him. And uh, after three weeks that he was unconscious, the doctors told his sons, heart and lungs are connected. So they fixed the heart, the heart is working perfect. But the heart had influence on the lungs. Now the lungs don't work. They don't know what to do. And uh, they cannot see a way he will recover. So the family asked the doctors, can we bring another doctor from another hospital about that? They said, yes, bring anyone you want. So they checked and uh, there was a doctor in Coronel Hospital. Coronel is a very good uh, hospital, Coronel. So they checked um, the Jewish doctor. Jewish is the best about lungs. And they called him. And they talked to him, please, we have a rabbi in uh, Maimonides, please come to visit him. He said, no way, I cannot, I'm very busy, I have many patients in Coronel. And they said, okay, we'll take you private, we will give you big money. He said, it's not a question of money, I have many patients, they are rich, they give me money, I don't, uh, the money... I will get from uh, another way, so I don't want. They begged him. He said, no way. Okay. Then the family with some uh, uh, rich people in the Syrian community were sitting in one house one evening together to think what to do, what next. The same day, I came to New York. I came, I heard the story, I told them, what do you think if I call the doctor, I will tell him I am son of Arab Ovadia, and Arab Ovadia told me uh, to tell you, please go visit uh, Hakam Baruch. Take care of Hakam Baruch. When I said that, I said that, everybody was laughing. <laughs> you think we offered him big money you think he, if you tell him Arab Ovadia, he will, we probably never heard the name of Arab Ovadia. I told them, okay, but you have nothing to lose. If I call him, nothing will happen. They said, okay, if you want to call, call. So I made a telephone call to my father. He said, of course, tell him that I ask, okay? So I called the doctor, his cell phone, it was 10 o'clock at night. I, my name is uh, David Yosef. I'm son of Arab Ovadia Yosef. Did you hear the, about Arab Ovadia Yosef? He said, who doesn't? Good. 
So I told him, look, my father has a friend, his best friend, since he was a child. He loves him very much. Rabbi Baruch Ben Hayim. And my father told me to ask you to go to visit him. He is in Maimonides Hospital. He said, if your father asks, of course I will do it. So I will come tomorrow. But I have a problem. I have four hours from five to nine o'clock. So five, five o'clock in the afternoon, it's very big traffic. Until I will reach the hospital, I will not have enough time to take care of the rabbi. I told him, doctor, let me check. I will go back to you. I closed the phone. I came to them to the room. They were sitting, I went to the other room. I came, I said, he agreed. What? You are joking. I said, no, I'm not joking. He said, yes. But he said he has a problem about uh, how to reach the hospital from Coronel to Maimonides. So one of them said, I have, I have connection with the police, with the mayor of New York police. So uh, he called the doctor. He told him five o'clock outside of the hospital, there will be a few police cars. They will take you with Siron, you will reach uh, Maimonides very quick. Okay, 5.30, he was there. All the doctors came because he was very famous. And he checked, he checked. After that, he sat with all the doctors. He made the program. He told them you have to do like this, like that. He explained to them every detail. He was very, very good. And uh, he said, start. And uh, next two days I will come again. And he came four or five times. Three weeks after, Hacham Baruch could breathe by himself and uh, he needed some rehabilitation. And then he lived another four years healthy. Baruch Hashem. When he was the second or third time he came to the hospital, one of the people asked him, why, when we offered you money, you said no. And when uh, the son of a rabbi told you, come, you said, uh, yes, immediately. He didn't ask, no money, nothing, you came. He said, what do you mean, Arab Ovadia? You know Arab Ovadia? He said, no, but uh, I'm not religious also. But I have a karata tov. What do you mean a karata tov? He said, look, this doctor, his son went to Israel. And he was going in Jerusalem in the street. And one day, one Arab came and he bombed himself. He died, the Arab. And the son of the doctor got, he was uh, wounded very serious. Very bad. So immediately the doctor got a telephone call from Hadassah Hospital. Please come. Immediately he went to Israel. He went to the hospital and he saw his son and the doctors explained to him. He saw that they, perfect. They do everything they can for his son, but the danger is very big. So what he did, he is a Jew. So he went to the Kotel. He went to the Kotel and he was crying, praying. Then he told his friends, please take me to all the biggest rabbis, all the biggest tzaddikim, I want beracha. <coughs> they said, okay, they took him to Rav Yoshif. <coughs> Rav Yoshif, he was crying, he told Rav Yoshif what happened. So he blessed his son, yeah, yeah okay. Then he went to another rabbi. Then they took him to Harav Ovadia. He came to Harav Ovadia. He said, I saw a man, old man, 80 years old, with dark glasses. I was sitting next to him. I started to cry and to tell him, Rabbi, my son, like this, like that. And somebody translated. And suddenly I saw tears, tears. He was crying when he heard what happened to my son. He felt very bad about my son. He was crying. 
Suddenly, he stood up. He said, where is my driver? Yes, he's here. He said, take me to the hospital. He said, I was going with him. I was sitting next to him. All the way, I didn't talk. He didn't talk, nothing. We reached the hospital. He said, give me a chair. He sat next to my son's bed. And he was crying. He was saying to him. Then he gave him strong beracha, and Baruch Hashem, he recovered, my son. And he said, look, this rabbi, he never met me. He doesn't know me. He didn't know me. He didn't know my son. But he had so bad feeling about my son. And he is eight years old. He went to the hospital, especially to bless my son. So I can refuse when he asked me uh, to go for, for his friend, I can tell him, no, of course, Akarata Tov, I had to give him back. I went back to Israel, I told my father what happened. He was very excited, and he told me, you see, the Pasuk of Shlomo HaMelech, Shlach Lachmecha Al Pnei Amayim, sent you bread on the water. One day you will find it. When I did the favor to that doctor, I didn't think about he will give me once. I didn't know he's a doctor. A Jew came, you Jew was crying. So I felt bad, I, I did it. I did mitzvah. I didn't think it will come back. And Baruch Hashem, that mitzvah saved Rabbi Ben Chaim, Rabbi Ben Chaim's life. So Rabotai, always to do chesed, to do good things. You know, last parasha we read, Yaakov Avinu told Yosef, Chesed Shel Emet. Chesed Shel Emet, it means people, they have expect expectation to get back. When someone helps a dead man to bury him, so he doesn't have expectation from him. He's dead, he cannot help me anymore, but it's wrong. Here, in this world, you cannot. But if you do some hesed shel emet, it's real. You don't think about that. But you will get it back. Next world, you will get. Sometimes, you will get it from the children. I have another story. Um, about, <coughs> that story was about 40 years ago. 40 years ago. Um, one man was praying uh, the synagogue of my father. And I saw that he is uh, sad. He is sad. I asked his son, why your father doesn't look good? He <coughs> said, yes, you know why? My father, uh, he had a shop in Jerusalem, big shop, and um, he made uh, some not good business, and he lost all of his money. And he sold the shop, he gave it, uh, the money to the bank, and he tried to do another business, and again, he made, he didn't know what to do, something, and now he, he owes the banks $400,000. And now he doesn't have a shop, the bank now, they want to take the house. He signed the bank, and they want now his house. So he has no business, no house, nothing. Okay, I cannot help him. I was very young at that time, I didn't know what to do. But I told my father this story. This man, you know, is very sad because he lost his money, he doesn't have business, he's going to lose his house. When my father heard that, usually when you tell a man like my father, story like that, my father is not a businessman, he cannot help him, he will give him beracha and that's it. But here my father behaved different. I never saw him like that. He started to make telephone calls to all the friends and family of this guy. And he started to talk to them, please, 
this man is in trouble, give me money for him. Give me money, give me money. Everyone gave it. My father put it at, at his private bank account. At that time, the tax, they didn't ask. Uh, yeah. So my father collected 200,000 shekels, dollars, well, at his bank account. Now he needs another 200 and he cannot. That's it. He did the maximum. So then he thought, he told me, call the bank. I called the bank. I asked which bank. So then I got the name of the manager of the branch of the bank. And uh, I called him. My father talked to him. He said, I am uh, Rabbi Ovadia Yosef. He said, oh, I have big kabod, yeah, OK. My father said, please come to my house. I want to talk to you. The man came. My father told him, look, I'm not a businessman. Uh, this guy, he, I know he owes you $400,000. He said, yes. OK, look, I collected 200000 Now I'm talking to you now like a businessman. Choose. Oh, get the 200,000 and forgive about the, forget about the half, the other half, lose it, or if you say no, I will take the 200,000, I will not give it to you, I will give it to lawyers, I will hire the best lawyers to fight against you until you will lose everything. So choose, you want one bird on your head, and or two on the tree. And anyway, you will not get the money. My father spoke with him uh, tough. very tough. My father, it was not his way. He was not a businessman. So the manager of the bank, he said, Rabbi, uh, look, um, I hear you, but it's not my decision. I cannot make decision. I have to ask. OK, OK, go ask. After a few days, the man called my father. He said, I want to come to you. Um, they agreed. The head of the bank agreed. So give us the 200,000, and uh, we will forgive him the other half. OK, my father said, bring me the uh, contract. I want to check it. OK, he brought it. My father called uh, someone lawyer. He told him, check it, if it is uh, OK. They didn't make any problem. OK. The lawyer said it's, uh, they didn't lie to you. The bank are good. They, they give up the, the 200,000. So OK. My father told me, now bring the man. The man came to my father. And my father told him, look, I prepared it with the bank, with your bank. Sign. He didn't know anything. Sign. He said, about what? Sign, trust me, sign. He, before he signed, he saw he has to pay 200. He said, Rabbi, I, I have uh, no penny. 200,000. My father said, sign. OK, he signed. My father said, now, he opened his checkbooks, take a check. He wrote the check, go to the bank give them the contract, they will sign also. Before they sign, don't give them the check. After they sign also, give them the check. He was shocked, the man, he was crying, crying. And he went, he was quiet, he didn't say a word. And he went to the bank and he paid, it was okay. The man, he passed away a few months ago. He was 97. And since it happened 40 years ago, uh, he had good life, Baruch Hashem. Then I went to my father. I told him, look, your time is very expensive. You don't waste your time for, to make business, to, to negotiate with them. What happened here? Why did you do that? My father told me I will tell you why I did it. My father said that after he got married, 1943. Uh, uh, no, 1944. 
Tafshin Dalet. He said, I got married, I didn't have a penny. My wife didn't have a penny. We rented a small room. The kitchen was outside, uh, belonged to some neighbors together. And also the restroom was outside and the shower belonged to some neighbors. So we were very poor. We didn't have chairs to eat. When we wanted to sit to eat, we couldn't. So we had to bring the bed. We were sitting on the bed. We didn't have forks. We were poorest people. So the father of this guy, he was living in the neighborhood. And he was a rich man. And he saw my situation. He came to me, he said, Rabbi, I want to give you money. I said, no way. Tzedakah, I'm not a beggar, I don't want tzedakah. Please, take it, take it, I want to support you. No, no way, no way. I was embarrassed, I said no. Okay, the man saw that I said no. Since that long time, every day, he used to come to my house. His wife cooked um, the best food. Since that, my father started to eat ashpelau. You know what is ashpelau? It's a Bukhari's food. Yeah? His wife was Bukhari's. She used to cook like that. And uh, every day with meat, with everything, every day he used to bring lunch to my father's house. And my father said, I was starving. This man saved my life. So when his son is suffering, I can stay away. I had to help him. Akaratatov. Akaratatov. Even the father passed away. But my, my father helped the son because of the father. So Rabotai, it's a big lesson to us. Akaratatov. We have to educate ourselves and to get used for that every time to give back to do good not to think to get back and when someone did something good to us to give him back and by that same always it will come back to us and uh, we will be successful and we will not need anything Amen. so abotai i want to bless you all again בעזרת השם, בכל אשר תפנו, תשכילו ותצליחו. ביחד עם אמר הדאטרה, ידידי, הרב הגאון, הרב אלמליח, בעזרת השם, תצליחו בכל מעשה ידיכם. בריאות טובה, פרנסה טובה, אריכות ימים ושנים, זרע הקודש של קיימא, תגדלו את כל יוצאי חלציכם לתורה, לחופה, למצוות ולמעשים טובים. אמן כן יהי רצון.